All right, so tonight I was looking through my female ball pythons looking for eggs, and sure enough, I actually found one of my females on a big clump of eggs. And let me tell you, if you're actually anything like me looking for ball python eggs twice a day, I should probably caution you against checking for eggs late at night. And <laughs> let me tell you, I'm kind of a night owl. I like to go to bed anywhere from about midnight to about 3 a.m. And let me tell you, if you come around like 3 a.m. and you decide, all right, I'm gonna check my ball pythons to see if I have any eggs, right before I go to bed and you actually find some eggs, especially if you find multiple clutches of eggs, let me tell you, you could potentially be up until the sun comes up, putting those eggs up in the incubator. So I like to check my eggs usually about 10 p.m. to give me plenty of time to set them up in the incubator so I'm not up all night, which is kind of crazy. It's actually happened to me several times before. So right now it's about 10 o'clock, which is about a perfect time. And these eggs are actually from a lemon blast female. As a matter of fact, if you actually looked at one of my previous videos, I did a video on a really big lemon blast that just laid one egg and potentially she could have laid about 10 eggs. So I was pretty concerned that she was egg bound with all those eggs. And here it is five days later and sure enough, she's actually started laying those eggs. And let me tell you, I've never really had a lot of success, even just a couple days being egg bound. It seems like for whatever reason, I just cannot get those eggs to hatch and they just go bad in the incubator. As a matter of fact, what I'll probably do is I'll pull those eggs and set them up in the incubator tonight and then I'll run down to the reptile store tomorrow. And what I'm gonna try, I'm gonna actually get some isopods. I've seen some people with, you know, some really bad eggs. They get really furry and looking really bad in the incubator because you have to incubate them at like 90 degrees for two months and about 100% humidity. So if anything goes wrong in there, let me tell you, the mold and mildew can develop really fast. And the isopods actually eat all the mold and the fungus, which is kind of interesting. So I'm going to try that and give it a shot with the isopods to see if I can actually save this clutch. But let me tell you, I don't have a lot of faith in, in retained eggs, especially after five days of being in that female. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over. I want to show you this female in this tub, and then we'll check the eggs. We'll put them up in the incubator, and we'll check the female. Hopefully she passed all those eggs and doesn't have any retained inside of her. Because let me tell you, some egg-bound females, that's not a good sign. As a matter of fact, last year I had one that was a retained an egg for like three weeks which is kind of crazy. And usually after three weeks, they come back on food and you can feed them a rodent. And just the process of eating will usually pass any egg bound eggs through the female if you can actually get them back on food. So let's jump over to the female and check out these eggs. Hopefully she actually laid them all. All right, so this girl is all the way down on the very bottom tub down here. She's one of my biggest females. She is 11 years old, pretty old female. And we think this one may have Volta, maybe uh, one of the ball pythons that are a little bit bigger than most of your ball pythons. And take a look at that. It looks like she's got some really good eggs that she's wrapped around, and it looks like she kind of kicked one out. But from what I can tell, they look like they're pretty good and kind of pearly white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this whole tub out, put it up on the table, and then we'll pull her off those eggs, get a count, and then we'll put them up in the incubator. All right, so take a look at this. This is actually looking pretty promising, not too bad. It was just weird. She laid that one egg really early. And let's see if we can get this girl off of these eggs. <laughs> this girl is really big. Look at how many eggs she has under there, wow. And she is hissing a little bit. Looks like we have one slug, the first slug of the year. All the other ones look really good. Take a look at that. And it looks like, from what I can tell, just kind of looking at her body condition, it looks like she laid all the eggs, which is pretty awesome. So I want to put her down here in my boa tub. Just temporarily. Wow, look at all those eggs. Actually, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a slug. So these are usually the infertile eggs, these little slugs. And as a matter of fact, when I first started, I tried incubating them, and <laughs> let me tell you, all these small eggs, they will not develop. There's no veins or anything in a slug egg. We can actually candle it. And so what I want to do is, I'm actually going to, looks like most of them are separated already. 
which is pretty awesome. I like to separate them all. Looks like we're sticking a little bit to the bottom on some of these eggs. I've actually seen some people use paper on the bottom. I've never really had that much of a problem with them sticking to the bottom. Uh, it looks like I can't tell if one of them ha is leaking or if she kind of peed a little bit. It's kind of wet underneath, which is kind of concerning. Let's see if I can get this egg up. So yeah, one of them, I don't think it's leaking. I think, I think she might have just peed a little bit. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. And it looks like they haven't been laid too long. It looks like they'll come apart pretty easy. If you actually wait too long, sometimes they can really get super stuck together where you almost can't get them apart. And these are kind of, kind of loosely together you just definitely don't want to rip them uh, I've actually ripped one once taking them apart and a band-aid works pretty good to get them apart once you rip them and usually uh, you can kind of kind of pull them apart one way and then another direction to kind of move them back and forth so you don't keep pulling from one direction it seems like you have better luck if you pull them from different directions and it seems like the longer you keep them together before separating them the harder they are to separate sometimes they can be really super difficult as a matter of fact i had one clutch if you watch that video where they stuck to the bottom it took me like five minutes to get them just off the bottom of the tub which is usually never a problem and then i did another video if you watch that one where i actually candled them and looked at the embryo compared to how the female laid the eggs and it seemed like sometimes she actually laid the embryos, the eggs with the embryos on the bottom of the egg, which I never thought was possible with ball pythons. I always thought they laid them, you know, sort of straight up or to the side. Or I thought, you know, if she, they laid them upside down that they'd kind of settle, then the embryo would actually kind of work itself back to the top. But no, it looks like they can actually lay the egg with the embryo on the bottom of the egg. And I've actually read that, as I actually read a scientific journal, it was, it was kind of a weird scientific study they did on ball python eggs, where if you incubate with the embryo on the top, you have a better success rate as far as the hatching of the ball pythons. All right, so we have a bunch of eggs. They look really good. Usually, if you have retained eggs for too long, usually sometimes they actually smell or look kind of weird. Sometimes I've actually seen them where they're a little bit slimy, but these look really good for being retained for five days. I actually had a comment. Someone actually mentioned that they thought maybe that uh, that there was just so, so many eggs in the female that it just didn't have room and had to push one out to make room for all the other ones, so maybe that was the, the problem with the other one. Maybe it was just early instead of these being late. And I didn't really look at the, the sheds, and usually it's like 30 days from the pre sh the pre-lay shed. I haven't really looked at that. So that's kind of interesting that these look a lot better than I expected. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to candle these and see, hopefully they're good. I actually had some one year where I didn't have any veins or anything in any of the eggs and none of them developed in one of my pie, my pied female. That was like a bust on that one, which is kind of crazy. So hopefully these will be okay. It looks like this one is good. You can actually see in it really well in this one. So they probably, well, actually, as a matter of fact, I actually checked on them this morning and there was no eggs. So these were laid at least within uh, 12 hours about, and you can definitely see they're nice looking really good. These, as a matter of fact, I might not need any isopods for these. I thought these are going to be a lot worse than they are, which is pretty amazing. So this is actually the cross between my Coral Glow 100% Het Pied and my Lemon Blasts. I know a lot of people were kind of bummed that they missed some Coral Glows one year where I was selling my Coral Glows. I was selling them super fast. 
And my version of Core Glow looks so much better than other Core Glows when they're hatchlings. It's a lot of oranges and purples as hatchlings. But let me tell you, when they grow up and age and mature, they pretty much look like all the other Core Glows. They kind of turn into that two tone yellow with the. Uh, uh, kind of the freckling all over them, but it seems like as hatchlings they look a lot better Than some of the other ones So if you're actually selling, you know, coral glows at the shows and you have my line of the coral glow You'll actually see it is a lot better than others Not that it really matters because they aid they really change as they grow up and probably one of my favorite combinations is the combination of the coral glow and the pinstripe together which is one of my favorite combinations. So it'll be interesting to see if we can actually see the pastel in the Coral Glow pinstripes. All right, so those look fantastic, way beyond my expectation. All right, so I'm gonna set up this egg incubation box. I use these little six quart shoe boxes that I get over on Amazon. And I actually add 150 grams of vermiculite, 150 grams of water to this box to get it going. So it's usually about two of these 16 ounce cups is right around 150 grams. So I've been giving you an update on my chickens lately. So I've been having a problem with, uh, so it's kind of interesting. Someone actually asked a question, hey, how do you keep the predators away from all your chickens and ducks? And as soon as they asked that question, I had a problem with something that actually jumped in the chicken coop and wiped me out as far as my chickens. So I actually downsized my chickens to where I pretty much got rid of all my roosters except one and then a week later something comes in and killed my last rooster, which is a bummer. I could not believe it. And of course I was gonna sell fertile hatching eggs and it's hard to sell, it's impossible to sell fertile hatching eggs without a rooster. So now I actually saved my very last hatching eggs. I have like 40, 40 hatching eggs that uh, I'm gonna hatch myself in my own incubator so I can get a rooster again, which I can't believe something jumped in, killed uh, most of my chickens. As a matter of fact, I have uh, uh, just four chickens left. Luckily, it didn't uh, affect my ducks, didn't get my, any of my ducks, which is a good thing. So let's see, we're at uh, 148 grams of water here. And I use, use a little syringe to get the last little bit, 150, 100, yeah, 150. All right. Yeah, so that was a bummer about my chickens. As a matter of fact, I started selling a, little, a few chicken eggs and some duck eggs online. And for some reason, all my ducks stopped laying eggs. I don't know if they stopped or I think I may have a crow in there running around eating all the eggs in my chicken coop. And all my ducks are like, I'm not getting any eggs and I lost a bunch of chickens. And I found out where he was getting in. I actually found the, <clears throat> the hole in the fence. <clears throat> He's actually crawling under the fence. He dug a hole, so I kind of patched that which is kind of crazy. As a matter of fact, whatever it was, it was trying to get in tonight. I went out there and checked, and he kind of moved some stuff around on the outside trying to get in, which is kind of crazy. I'm getting really frustrated with those ducks, uh, with all the predators I have over here. Up here in the mountains of Colorado, there's so many predators in the air, and then, you know, mountain lions and bears, and I think it's actually a raccoon that's getting all my, my chickens right now. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I wanna move these eggs into this egg box. All right, so it's a pretty tight squeeze. I can fit exactly 11 eggs in one of these boxes and we have 11 eggs so it's, I don't have to split it up into two boxes. And this one's pretty close because it's really close to the edge. You almost have to kinda wedge it just a little bit to keep them, you definitely don't want them up against the sides because you get a lot of condensation on the sides and you don't want it dripping down on the eggs. The only egg that looks like it may have a problem is this one. Take a look at this. This kind of has a little bit of almost like, a, almost looks like it's a little bit egg bound. You kind of have that weird discoloring like right in here, which this one could be a problem. Uh, as far as that's concerned and this one maybe just a little bit right up in here not too bad on that one though 
compared to the other one. But all the other ones look really good. As a matter of fact, I might actually still do the isopods in this box. And then I have the other egg that <laughs> it was actually starting to develop. We actually candled it. It was looking pretty good, but it kind of was smelling kind of funky. So I might still do the isopods just for kicks. Maybe throw them in here and throw them in the other box. As a matter of fact, I might actually have, <laughs> I might actually just kind of retain some of those isopods in case I have some other problems here in the coming weeks and I can actually kind of spread them out to other ones. I, I don't know how those isopods will actually last. I think they'll last pretty long just in the box. They, they put them on like, like carbon or something like that to keep them going. I've actually bought them before and I actually, as a matter of fact I actually put some up in my crested geckos that have been living in the substrate and it's interesting you see a little bit of mold in the bottom of the crested gecko substrate and then like a week later you see just kind of all the isopods attacking that mold and completely eliminating it so it seems like it works pretty good. All right, so this is Glad Press and Seal that I use on top of the box to keep all the humidity in. So that's pretty awesome. We have one dud egg. As a matter of fact, I had a video on where I actually took a dud egg like this and I fried it up and ate it. And let me tell you, you do not want to do that. I almost threw up when I ate that egg. They are not good to eat. I've actually seen some people down in Florida taking like the Burmese eggs and putting them in like cakes and stuff like that to where you probably can't even taste them anyways. But let me tell you, I would not eat snake eggs. So what I'm going to do is I am going to print a label, a couple labels for this. I'll show you what the labels are when I print them up. All right, so I printed out two labels. One of them is the pairing Coral Glow Het Pied crossed with my Lemon Blast number one. And I haven't done this pairing before, so uh, as far as I know, the Lemon Blast is not Het for Pied, but you never know, you know, you can randomly pop out of a visual pied and prove out something that you've never actually bred to a recessa before, which would be pretty awesome if it actually happened. And then this is the date it was laid. Today is the 21st of May and it'll hatch 60 days later on the 20th of July. So I actually set them up in my incubator so the new stuff hatches up on top. This is actually the fifth box in my incubator. Of course one of the boxes was just the one egg so this is really like the last part of my fourth clutch for 2021 which is pretty exciting. So I'm gonna put these labels on and then we'll put this box up in the incubator. All right, so this is the fifth box in my incubator. And the funny thing is, is this is the box that had just the one egg in from the very beginning that was laid five days ago from that same girl. And the problem is, as soon as you open up this incubator, let me tell you that smell hits you like a ton of bricks. It's like, you know you have a bad egg in there. The funny thing is I actually candled that egg and it looked like it was started to develop. But if you actually look at it, it looks, I don't know if you can kind of see it through here, but it's kind of looking a little slimy all over the egg like that one probably not going to make it. As a matter of fact, the, the ones that were kind of questionable in this new box that I put down on the bottom, if there's anything kind of weird going on with them, probably what I'll do is I'll pull those eggs out and put them in a separate box and then try different things as far as trying to recover them. But I'm definitely going to use um, some of those, uh, no, not isopods, they're actually springtails. I think I was saying isopods in the rest of the video. I actually meant springtails. The little tiny, little super tiny, like little white. Oh, you can't almost hardly see them. They're so super small. As a matter of fact, in my crested geckos, I use uh, the isopods and the springtails, uh, the combination. It seems like uh, the isopods will actually eat like the dead vegetation, and then the springtails are the ones that really eat all the mold and the fungus which is what I'm going to get tomorrow. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty exciting to get the rest of those eggs, especially looking as good as they do. So that's pretty awesome. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.